Hi, Joe Smiles here. So a new study that's causing a lot of stink online and in the newspapers on the news has just been published, but it hasn't been released yet. And it showed that people who ate their food within a eight hour or less window had a 91% higher risk of dying from cardiovascular disease, including stroke and cancer, compared to people who ate within a 12 to 16 hour window. Now, the study is an observational study and it was based on the USA Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, which interviewed 20,000 people between 2003 and 2018. Now, this study has a number of limitations. Firstly, intermittent fasting is a fad diet. It's a very hard diet to follow. It's fad diet because there's lots of different types of intermittent fasting. And when there's lots of different types of a diet, then it's classed as a fad diet. And a fad diet, in my philosophy, is a diet that that you fit your lifestyle into rather than you fitting the diet into your lifestyle. So it's a fad diet. Also, the limitation is that it's very hard to follow a strict intermittent fasting diet because there's so many curveballs in people's lives that they could be intermittent fasting for one week and then the next week it goes out the window a bit and then the following week it goes out the window and the next week they could be intermittent fasting again within an eight hour window or shorter. So it's, and also the other point is that following 20,000 people over this many years, <clears throat> there can be lots of errors in the data in people reflecting back and remembering when they ate, what they ate, what time frames they ate at, and how much of between 2003 and 2018 of that period was actually intermittent fasting or not. So another limitation of the study is that the study is observational study, which means that the participants have been observed and the data has been observed over a long period of time. Strict data on this kind of thing is very hard to do and we wish we could have long-term data on intermittent fasting for 5, 10 years, 15 years, but we just don't have that data because it's just such a hard diet for many, many hundreds or thousands of participants to, to do. People just can't maintain the diet long term. We have studies that are on intermittent fasting that are three months, six months, maybe at the best one year. The best we can do is an observational study. Now with observational studies, it's important to realize that correlation found in studies related to mortality, death and disease doesn't equal causation. So correlation doesn't equal causation, although with lots of observational studies and further ran randomized control trials where we put different people into different uh, trials and compare the outcomes, we do know that observational studies have their benefits. For example, we know that now smoking is the leading cause of cancer, especially lung cancer, and we know that obesity is the second leading cause of cancer. So we have very good observational studies and good data on that. We also know that eating more than 90 grams of uh, red meat and or processed meat per day increases your chances of cancer and uh, obesity and cardiovascular disease related to saturated fat and increased low density lipoprotein cholesterol, which is your black cholesterol. So there are pros and cons to observational data and studies. The other thing is with this study, we don't know the pathophysiological mechanisms of why time-restricted eating uh, would cause cardiovascular disease uh, so dramatically. Uh, we've only got short-term studies on intermittent fasting, so it's very hard for us to look at what would happen to the body or what would happen to, you, to your health over a long period of time, like a year or five years or 10 years on a strict certain type of uh, intermittent fasting diet or time-restricted diet. But if we look at study one, 2021, here on intermittent fasting causing suboptimal protein feeding. And when you're eating in a smaller window, like eight hours or less, it reduces muscle protein synthesis. And this is linked to cardiovascular disease because people who don't spread their protein out over the day don't have regular muscle protein synthesis metabolism occurring. And so they can have uh, less muscle mass linked to cardiovascular disease and bouts of starvation don't allow for proper feeding of protein and thus the body's ability reduces to synthesize the protein throughout the day and thus reducing muscle mass. And study 2, 2024, shows that in over 2,000 participants, those who ate meals over a longer window, over three or more meals per day, that includes snacking, had a 32% less chance of obesity than those having more 
food in less time period. So spreading your food out. And this is probably likely due to people getting hungry when they're not eating, when they're on time restricted uh, eating diets, and then overeating calories when they can eat them over a six or eight hour window, and then therefore leading to a 32% increase in obesity in longer trials. Okay, so it's important to note that intermittent fasting isn't good for everyone. Uh, you can't pigeonhole or box everyone into the same group and say, you've got to do this diet, it's the best diet. There's no research to say that it's a good diet or it's a miracle diet, not true. That's ideological thinking, so we've got to get away from that. Study 3, 2023 explains that intermittent fasting may be too stressful for certain people, especially people with comorbidities or metabolic problems. So we're talking people with chronic diseases, pregnancy, people with diabetes type 1 and 2, especially type 1, um, frail people, old people, people with kidney failure, cancer, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, coronary artery disease, stroke patients and those on beta blockers. So it's important to note that maybe some people in the study had certain comorbidities and, and it wasn't working for them. That's why it puts the chances of dying from cardiovascular disease up higher. So I'll conclude with three points. Point one, just because people have been doing a certain fad diet for centuries or a diet or something, some holistic medicine doesn't mean that it's true. It's a logical fallacy and the logical fallacy is an appeal to tradition. Just because something's been going on and it's traditional doesn't mean it's worked. Just because people have been doing acupuncture or been drowning witches for centuries doesn't mean that it's true or that it works or that it has any evidence when both actually don't have any evidence whatsoever, but that's for another video. Point number two, there's nothing magical about intermittent fasting. As shown in study four, 2022, there's zero evidence that it increases longevity or makes you have a healthier life or that it improves autophagy. It's less beneficial than general calorie restriction and calorie maintenance, lower body fat levels than doing an intermittent fasting diet. So it does no better than a calorie restricted diet and people tend to do better on calorie maintenance and calorie restricted diet over longer periods of time. And it's more sustainable. And point three, any diet is a fad diet. You need to follow a diet that's sustainable to you and that is regular and fits into your lifestyle. So let me repeat this philosophy of mine. You don't want your lifestyle to fit into a diet that's called a fad diet. You want your diet that fits into your lifestyle. That's the key point here. And that's how you make eating sustainable for your life and for your lifestyle. And that's what my Fat Loss SOS course is all about. It's all about getting fitting your diet into your lifestyle and not the other way around because it doesn't work. Okay, thanks for listening. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the my channel. Please make any comments and ask any questions and I'll see you in the next video and have a great day.